Potter Props Department produced literally tens of thousands of props throughout the 10 years of filming. And Pierre Bohanna was head prop maker for all eight films. Wands, boomsticks, swords and snitches, everything from the Philosopher's Stone to the Goblet of Fire were created, crafted and manufactured by Pierre and his incredible team. Iconic sets like Dumbledore's office and the Room of Requirements all relied almost exclusively on props to make them the unique and memorable scenes they've now become. Pierre and his team have now helped to restore and preserve thousands of those original props and you can see them all in a unique once-in-a-lifetime experience. Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter, brings together a dazzling display of original film sets, special effects and costumes along with all your favourite props from all eight movies to create the most spectacular labyrinth of Harry Potter memorabilia. Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter. A magical experience you won't forget. How's everybody doing? Are you ready to continue on? It's been such a packed day. Who's been here with us for all of our panels so far? Oh, it's going to get a lot better. So we talked about actors. We've also had things about the exhibition going on. We learned a little bit about graphic design. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about props. Are you ready to go? Please join me in welcoming to the stage the head prop maker for all Harry Potter films, Pierre Bohanna. <laughs> Welcome, Pierre. So good to have you. Have a seat there, sir. Grab that microphone. So, how does it feel to be the prop maker for all of the films? What's that experience like? <laughs> I, how do you express it? How do you? I. I I thought when I got the phone call from uh, uh, from uh, Neil Lamont, 15 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, to uh, see what I would be interested in working in this this little film that was happening at Leeds. Now it's just how do you equate it? Absolutely incredible, incredible. 15 years is a philosopher's stone. Uh, some yeah. Amazing. Very cool. Very cool. So, what were some of your memories working on the film for the first time? You first showed up, started making props. What were some of the fondest memories that you have up there when you first started? Again, it's. I mean, the thing with Frost of Stone was the, was the establishment. So, the really big things were wands and uh, and brooms. That was it. That's the first thing. And the thing with brooms was that's the first time I met uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Mm -hmm. Was at a fitting for his for his first broom fitting. <laughs> <laughs> There's an actual fitting for the broom. There was, there was. There, John Richardson, the uh, special effects coordinator, made this uh, uh, jig that, uh, that you could measure measure Daniel's proportions. Of course, Daniel then was he was literally ten years old. It was three days after he'd been mm -hmm. cast, uh, and a tiny little guy. And they they wanted them to ride in the Quidditch. Uh, and uh, to ride like jockeys so that their feet were tucked right underneath. Sure, them. sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was, uh, that was the first time we had. Now, you mentioned Quidditch. Uh, we have one of your most famous pieces here, of course, from that, uh, from that game. Why don't you tell us a little bit about making the, uh, the snitch? Oh, the snitch. Well, of course, the lovely thing, <laughs> you know, when you make, make things, and I got a chance to put a fantastic team together, but the snitch, I... I, uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to do myself, uh, and uh, it's uh, I got a little plastic ball and I gridded it out and, and marked it out and started sculpting it up, and uh, uh, yeah, it was um, it was a yeah, it was a great experience. It, it, it's a really important prop, so they tend to Stuart Craig um, sort of instructed his his uh, concept designers and the art directors and, on how it would look and it's really sort of interpreting his, uh, his ideas and, and how it would work. Anything else about that? So, yeah, let's give a round of applause there. That's an awesome prop there. Of course, it played, it played a very good part in some of the experiences Harry Potter had during the film as well. But uh, let's see how all that, all that came together. We got a clip, I believe, that you're going to show us here. So, page into the video screens. Watch this. Not bad, Potter. You'd make a fair beater. Uh-oh. What was that? 
Butter. Nasty little butters. But you are a seeker. The only thing I want you to worry about is this. The golden snitch. I like this ball. Ah, you like it now? Just wait. It's wicked fast and damn near impossible to see. What do I do with it? You catch it. Before the other can see it. You catch this, the game is over. You catch this, Potter. And we win. <laughs> So, you also mentioned uh, wands. Wands. Yeah. <clears throat> Props in Harry Potter. Yeah. Starts with wands, isn't it? Um, yeah, they were, they were a great, they were an amazing experience. I mean, the, the thing with wands is that they, they are absolutely bespoke to each character. And also, at the beginning, there was lots of different ideas about what the wands were. You know, they can, the, the concepts of them were, from crystals tied to, to roots to, to lots of different ideas, metal castings, etc., uh, etc. Et so what we ended up doing was that we made a whole selection and a range, uh, and they were sent to Jo, and she she um, uh, she selected uh, Harry's wand um, and uh, Draco's from from those those initial things, and also sort of set the style and the idea of what wands were in her world and her mind to that. So they were very simple rosewoods um, and uh, precious woods, ebony handles, and things like that. So uh, yeah, that's really good. But once we've made those, then um, uh, they you know they're, they're lumps of wood like that are quite dangerous. So so we had to make uh, identical versions. We moulded them. We did uh, resin ones, we did rubber ones uh, for the stunt scenes, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, um, at the moment, actually, in, just to say, uh, in the expo, uh, in the Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, uh, two of my, well, two of my crew, um, Tracy Curtis and Katrina uh, Meridue, are demonstrating one making and, uh, uh, and how, how we go about Sort of working once. If you guys want to see that, definitely recommend going out and look. Who's been through the uh, through the expo already? So you saw this process that Pierre's talking about. Yes, yeah, pretty cool. They uh, the, they start with a dowel rod. Yeah, let's give a big round of applause. Awesome. It's awesome. I got a chance to uh, to walk through there uh, yesterday, just before they were closing. It's pretty amazing. They have the lay there. They take a dowel out. They just they literally start from scratch. They make markings as they go to make sure that to to your point, it is too specific detail each each uh, measurement that's right that's right you i mean they're showing a sort of general idea but some of them some of them became incredibly complicated you know they were involved metal castings and mm -hmm. sculptings and, and crystal castings lots of you know it, there's so much characterization into each each one yeah it really it really is an amazing process and so do you have your own favorite wand that you got to make of the, of the many that were uh, processed um i did there's Again, it's a really difficult call because they're, they're all so beautiful and they're all, they're all telling a story. I mean, some of them are good experiences to make, like uh, um, uh, Lucius Malfoy's one. That, you know, Jason Isaac came up with this idea of wanting it inside his staff, so he, uh, you know, we developed that for him. Um, there was Slughorns, I remember Slughorns was a lovely one because it was, it was very eccentric, lots of different complicated processes to get it to work. But to be honest, I love McGonagall's. I think it's just really simple, beautiful, elegant design. It, it, you know, I know Maggie loved it, so it was great. Awesome. <laughs> and earlier you mentioned that you had a couple team members that were over at the expo. But uh, when you start a project like this for the films, um, how many how many members of your team do you have? How many people working with you? Well, they, they get bigger and bigger every time. I and mean, the original on Floss of Stone, we probably had about like 15 guys, but by the end, by sort of Deathly Hallow, we had sort of 30 or 40 guys making stuff. And that's just hand props and bespoke stuff. Wow. They get big, big crews. But there's, there's, there's such an incredible combination of artisans, engineers, uh, model makers, and it's such a joy to be able to sort of get all these guys together and do, do all this wonderful work. We're very spoiled. So you stay fairly busy, you know, with the expo, and of course, talking about all of these things that came to fruition. And I'm sure 
you know, once the series kind of concluded, you took a deep breath, and then if folks were with us yesterday, we saw a preview to a film that's coming out in November, Fantastic Beasts. That's right. So, what did you think about that, uh, that trailer? It's fantastic, and it's, it's the, it's the, honestly, it's a thin end of the wedge. Uh, I'm really excited by it, you know, and you guys will, are going to be uh, just amazed by it. Yeah, because you're, you're going to be doing all the props for, for those films as well, yes? We are, yeah, we yeah. have been, yeah. Definitely. Now, since you kind of have the inside scoop on what's going down, with this movie, can you give us a little, uh, a little secret? Maybe one or two? Of course not, I can't do anything. Oh, come on, you guys want to hear maybe a little bit of something that's going on with something perhaps, something's happening? Come on, Pierre. Well, I can tell you a, a, a tiny bit. Eddie um, has, uh, uh, or he plays Newt, uh, he has a briefcase, and this, this briefcase is the cornerstone of how he does his business, how he, how he looks after, collects, and manages all his fantastic beasts. So, how he uses it, and this, how he uses it as a transition into into the world where he looks after them. Um, we had to, we had to, uh, uh, you know, sort of be involved in working that up. It's, it's fantastic. I don't want to tell you any more because when you're sitting there, you're you're going to be sitting there with your jaw on the floor watching how it works. It's pretty Well, yeah, it's pretty basic because you see this trailer and then of course, you, obviously there's something going on with this case. But we really don't know anything else about that except what we are learning from those who are choosing to kind of discuss little bits about the movie that's coming up. So yeah. it makes it even more exciting. Who's going to be seeing that film, by the way? Yeah, that'll be one of them. And the film is set in, uh, in New York. It's, it's set in New York, but the, uh, the whole film was uh, was uh, filmed in the UK at Warner Brothers Leeds New Studios, and the home of Harry Potter, um, where the last eight films were made, um, and where you, and again where you can go and see the real real um, real props at the Warner Brothers Studio tour and the making of Harry Potter. And now the last shots of the Harry Potter film were filmed in Leeds in over five years ago. So what was the atmosphere like in those final days of, of shooting? I don't think we believed it was going to end. To be honest, I mean, it's, 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 you do you just keep going. We're having, but you know, we're professional. We know it has to. We has to um, uh, sort of wrap up. True, true. Now everyone out there, of course, knows the uh, the famous battle, the iconic battle of Hogwarts. Did any of your props make it into that uh, sequence? Yeah, we had a few things in there. We had um, uh, obviously uh, Voldemort has the Elder Wand by that point, and he's fighting with it. And we helped visual effects with the whole as it starts to glow and break apart, mm -hmm. uh, so we're doing that. And also, of course, uh, with the uh, Sword of Gryffindor, uh, right. uh, which Matt used to kill Nagini, uh, uh, the sword was made of, you know, it had a sil real solid silver handle um, with an with a aluminium handle to, uh, to blade part to, to keep the weight in control. Um, yeah, so, and then we had a few jewels and some, and, colors and as usual pretty little to pull it together to get have the correct look yeah well um speaking of those props and those scenes let's uh let's take a look at the props in action <laughs>
Good to have you back with us again. Have a seat right there, sir. We've got a microphone for you as well. Uh, this was some pretty handy sword work you had there. What was that experience like going through those and shooting those scenes? Oh, did you just watch it? Yes. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. I mean, um, I remember reading the book um, and, and, you know, learning that, that Neville was going to pull the sword of Gryffindor from the hat and, and then obviously behead Nagini and uh, I just thought this is going to be amazing and it didn't disappoint. It was, it was so much fun to come into work and swing a sword around all day. It was absolutely amazing. Awesome. Awesome. And Pierre, I think, uh, don't you have something with us as well? Yeah, uh, the, sword. the sword there? Yeah. Yeah. And Pierre, I think we were talking about this sword. This this sword is the actual that's that you just laid down. This is one of the two swords from the movie, correct? Yeah, this is one that I think we originally eventually we made three, but yeah, this is one that won the three. So the sword of this is the sword of Gryffindor. This is in the room the sword of Gryffindor. All right, just want to make that clear, everybody. <laughs> this wasn't just a prop; it was the prop. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's a real deal. All right, what do we have there? So we have the sorting hat that uh, yes, that yeah, Matt used. Do you want to grab it? Yeah, okay. Well, you see, the thing about this was that um, I get asked quite often um, how we uh, did a lot of the stuff that we did in the movie, special effects wise, um, and this stuff wasn't special effects. We had Pierre on hand, so. Still works. <laughs> yeah. Um, no one's more surprised than I am. I will uh, allow Pierre to explain how we perform that feat of magic. <laughs> Some of the fun of all the new technologies and everything that's involved in filmmaking these days is sometimes it's really nice to use a really old magical trick, which any hardware store can, can uh, you can do this, and it's basically your own tape measure. <laughs> I don't think anyone will ever build or measure anything the same again. They'd be completely distracting and sword fighting rather than building uh, cupboards and uh, putting up bookshelves. Everybody will go home and grab their, uh, their home tape measure and say, I am Matt Lewis. I am Matt Lewis. <laughs> That's awesome. So, Matt, you obviously had a lot of fun at Leaves. And, and how, you were pretty young when you first started uh, shooting the films. How was that experience and, and, well, being away from home as well? But, having that, uh, you know, that experience with the films? Well, I mean, come on, it, it, it was fantastic. I had the most amazing time um, on, on the films, as I'm sure you can imagine, it was, it was just exceptional. And um, we got to work with people who were the very best and are the very best in the business. And that's just not the actors, it's people like Pierre and the other crew members who we couldn't have made the movies without quite clearly. But, um, you know, going to work on, on Potter was, exceptional for more than just that. It was because I grew up with the books and the stories sure. and I was able to go onto a set that wasn't green screen, you know, it was, it was fully realized, it was fully constructed and I was surrounded by all of this stuff and it was just, I, thinking of that now, I, I think maybe even took it a little bit for granted when I was there um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was exceptional, so thank you. No, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And not only yes, most certainly. And, uh, you know, you got to, you know, do a lot of things with these incredible props, but you, you also had a, had a trusty pet, right? I don't know about trusty, but yeah, I had a pet. <laughs> um, so I had a toad, Trevor. Yeah, what was it like working with that? A nightmare. <laughs> Um, yeah, I wish that you'd made Trevor. I wish that we'd had a, a prop with Trevor. That would have been so much more convenient. Um, he, uh, well, for a start, he hated being held. Oh, really? He was called Harry, actually, in real life, which is an interesting little tidbit. But he hated being held, so he'd constantly try to jump out of my hands all the time, jumping into my face, jumping into other actors in the middle of scenes. Um, and then when he did behave, the only reason he did was because he wanted to relieve himself all over me. Oh, no. <laughs> which he did. And he was like, oh, no, I'll stay in your hands for this. <laughs> And he used to pee all over me. And we had a we had a stunt toad as well. Okay. So when when Harry had peed on me, they'd take him away and they give me 
a new one which had a full tank and would do the same thing. I don't know why they would do that. Is it something to do with the size of their trailer? <laughs> I have no idea. So you worked with toads and imaginary snakes. Any other uh, unusual skills that you learned while you were uh, doing the filming? Um, well, uh, I... Well, let's think. I remember we... <laughs> yeah, okay. So, in uh, Order of the Phoenix, mm -hmm. um, when David Yates came in, um, he had this idea that we should all learn uh, wand skills. Okay. And so we had, to, we had to have wand classes, and we learned how to, you know, to do the spells properly, as it were. Okay, right, right. Well, that's pretty cool. And, and did those moves keep you safe from the uh, Death Eaters? Uh, well, no, actually, there were, <laughs> I don't know if you, some of you might, might know that I was, uh, I was uh, <laughs> attacked um, by, by Helena Bonham Carter um, during um, one of the scenes in Order of the Phoenix. Right. Um, she was uh, holding Neville hostage and she had this, this, this great idea that she'd use the wand to really sort of tease Neville and play with him and enjoy that kind of torture. Um, which Bellatrix was famous for, and so she she decided to put the wand in my in my ear. Um, but we had an explosion on set, you know, stunts and stuff and pyrotechnics, and we weren't using the stunt ones that um, Pierre had made exactly for this situation. Uh, we weren't using those, and um, I went one way, she went the other, and the wand. Went and perforated my eardrum. Oh no! Threw, threw into my into my head. Um, How long did it take to recover from that? That must have hurt. I couldn't hear in my in my ear for for about a week or two. Um, I just was completely deaf in that ear. And the doctor came and was like, "It will. I I think it will be okay." He's like, no, "It will be. It will be okay. You'll be fine." And I just had to just sweat it out. And eventually, it all came back. And Helena was mortified. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're okay now. All right, that's good. We've, we've, we've moved past You and Helena are yeah, very good. We've moved past it. Well, that's good. It has been a couple of, of years, so. <laughs> Pierre, now you also had a hand and, and really designed the costumes for those Death Eaters that, the, that Matthew was talking about. Yeah, as far as the um, uh, masks are concerned, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we were involved. It was a great team effort involved Nick Dudman doing live cast and, and uh, obviously uh, Vijani, the, the costume designer. So it was a great effort to, to really. Um, uh, get to them, but they're they're uh, solid silver. They've done that. They were like jewelry makers eventually, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, chemical etchings. And yeah, they were they were a, a fantastic piece of work. It's funny talking about the the uh, the tour. I remember going in there the, fir the first week it had opened uh, 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 in London, and it's uh, walking past a, a cabinet with with all twelve of them. The originals in there. Uh, behind uh, six goths, you know, all in the full black, white apron, all with their arms over each other, tears coming down their face. Oh, it wow. Was, it was fantastic. It's lovely to see what they mean to people. Sure, sure. And those are on the uh, Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London. It's one of the many things that are there, yeah. That's great. So, yeah, definitely, if you haven't had a chance to yet, make sure you check that out. And, Matt, was it intimidating when you first started working with those? Because uh, they sound, I mean, they're really were sinister looking costumes. Was it intimidating working with them? Uh, yeah. I mean, oh, well, okay. There you go. Uh, looks like we've got some death ears with us. <laughs> Everybody stay calm. I'm sure they're here just to show off their amazing costumes.
They look amazing as always with that choreography. What do you have planned for us this weekend well, here in Orlando? Two things, Scotty. First of all, you can come and meet the Death Eaters at the incredible Warner Brothers Studio Tour London stand at the Expo. And also, kids, please come and join me tomorrow at 10 o'clock, Music Plaza Day, to learn the language of wand combat choreography. That's going to be awesome. I will be there. I'll be learning some wand choreography as well. Everyone, let's give a huge cheer. Head prop maker, Pierre Bohanna, the fantastic actor who played Neville Longbottom, Matt Lewis, wand choreographer, Paul Harris, and everyone in Warner Brothers Studio Tour London for making of Harry Potter. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you check them out at the Expo. Have a fantastic afternoon, and we'll see you real soon here in the celebration of Harry Potter 2016.